Hey there, Michael Curtis here. Excited to partner with SoundPro today and share with you one of my new favorite tools, the Yamaha RUIO 16D. At its core is it is a USB to Dante bridge. So you connect it to your computer and you can play back sources and get them onto the Dante network or your computer can receive Dante sources over USB at a very reliable and low latency. So Yamaha's main use case for this is to pair it up with their VST Rack Elements or VST Rack Pro software. So think of it as a software that runs in your machine that's able to host VST plugins. So you pick off Dante sources that would come from a console, run them into whatever processing you want and send them back. So it is a virtual insert rack that runs on a Mac or PC, low latency and is very stable. In addition to be able to have that bridge between the USB and Dante worlds, it has some analog IO as well. So you can get two inputs in as a monitor out, then also a headphone out. So we'll be unpacking all of this in more detail in a little bit, but it's a very flexible, very portable and robust unit. Excited to share it with you today. Uh, so we're gonna talk through the, the physical overview of the unit, the routing, and then three separate use cases and what's, what's going on with the unit. First being the main one that Yamaha designed it for with VST Rack, the second as a playback machine, and the third, is it, I think in my mind is the ultimate music director Swiss Army knife and uh, really excited to see how we can put it to work for you. Let's jump right in. All right, let's first get comfortable with the unit physically and then we'll jump into connections, routing and some use cases. First thing I noticed when I got it is the build quality. It's a nice metal chassis, it feels good in my hands. It has a nice weight to it, but I have zero problem throwing this in my Pelican, then also having TSA throw it around when I travel uh, and it's gonna hold up. So I've probably used it on 15 or 20 gigs now. It's been great, reliable and holds up. So moving first to the front panel, I've got two analog inputs. They're controlled here by two separate gain knobs that's mirrored here. If I have the pad engaged, it reduces it 26 dB and I get to a total uh, kind of net loss of minus six when it comes into the input. If I turn the pad off and I increase the gain here, I can get up to 64 dB of gain, which is over a thousand X increase from the incoming level. So plenty of nice clean gain on tap. I did an on-site recording for a corporate gig with a talent who used a SM 7B, I was able to get, again, plenty of gas, nice and clean, not noisy at all, and it sounded great. Moving on here to the Phantom power control, it's a simple on off switch for both inputs. At the top here, I've got my normal Dante system and sync lights. This light here will glow white when you do have a successful USB connection, which we'll go around to here in the back in a second. Now moving over to the monitor section, this controls the two XLR outputs that are here on the back. And now we can select three sources and control its volume. The first is monitor. And what it means by that is over here in VST rack, and this is the only way we were able to get something to the monitor output, is we queue something up. And then that would pass that specific source uh, out to the monitor output. So if I switch it over here to Dante, I'm now able to monitor Dante inputs 15 and 16. So again, this is a Dante to USB bridge. And now this uh, lets me able to monitor that here. And then now if I pipe it over to USB, this monitors USB outputs 15 and 16. So when it's connected to my machine and I'm playing back something over USB out of outputs 15 and 16, that's how we would select it. So again, monitor is the Q in VST rack. Dante is Dante inputs 15 and 16. And then USB is USB outputs 15 and 16. Lastly, move over here to the headphone amp, and I'll say this has a ton of gas. I, I was able to connect in-ears, um, several different headphone types, and it really was able to drive them, no problem. I'm able to switch between, if I press this in, again, Dante inputs 15 and 16, and if I depress it, I go to the monitor section or the Q bus over here in VST rack. And then lastly, have my bypass USB button that if something did go wrong inside the computer, if I was piping something in and out, it would bypass it and everything would just pass straight through the unit. So we'll come back to this nice handy routing diagram here in a little bit. But let's go to the back. On the back here, I've got my two XLR outputs. These are professional line level at plus four dBU. I like that it is XLR and not TRS, so I don't have to convert because oftentimes I'm just going to an XLR destination. 
Then we have the USB 2.0 connection. I really like that it's USB-C, but they have this nice locking connector, so I'm not gonna bump it out. I can switch between power sources, either being bus powered from my computer, again, Mac or PC, or I can push it over and I can have a separate power source that has an included cable for you right here. That's again, this nice, uh, screw connection and it goes to USB type A that can go into any off the shelf power brick uh, that gives you five volts. And so this is if you wanna run it standalone apart from a computer and just uh, use it in that way to maybe just pull analog source onto the Dante network or some other use. Or you can have it to where the USB 2.0 might be going to a USB dock and not getting enough uh, juice, which I don't recommend it, but sometimes you have to do weird things on shows. Uh, but you can make sure it's getting its full voltage that it needs uh, here on the separate DCN. Lastly, we have our Dante connections over here, which have EtherCon connected connections, which is great. So those will lock for you. And you know, a lot of times in production environments, you're getting EtherCon home runs to what you're getting, so you don't have to adapt it. I like that. And you have the normal link and uh, connection types here at the top. Right now, I'm just running a primary network, but just like most Dante devices with primary and secondary, you can put it in switched or redundant mode. Let's go here to the top of the unit where it gives you the routing diagram. So even though we do have VST rack, it's a plugin host uh, software. It's not a routing matrix. So you can do a couple routing things with it, but most of it is really decided for you uh, here on the unit. So first we have a pair of inputs and those come in as inputs 15 and 16. So right here, it tells you 15, 16 here on the front and that passes into the Dante network. And so that would then immediately uh, bring it onto Dante and then also to the uh, PC on the USB inputs 15 and 16, right? So it would override any of those sources if let's say maybe you have something else on the Dante network patched to uh, Dante ends 15, 16, it would override it. So you just be cognizant of that as you're planning your IO. So if I have anything routed here in Dante controller, uh, transmitting to this receiver, it would then immediately pass through one-to-one -to, -one to the USB card and then it would go to the computer. So again, that passes up here to the USB 2.0 uh, input. And I would select that as the audio driver or audio um, source in my computer. Uh, even though I could use Dante controller on my machine, I'm looking for audio sources to come over USB. And then now we just reverse it. So if I have audio playback over USB, it comes into the unit and then it is able to, from the computer, pass out to my uh, Dante network. So that goes here and then over to Dante outputs. And so I could have um, any sort of playback or channels or whatever I wanna source from a computer and push out onto the network, it would go here out to Dante. And this is also where it has the monitor out of VST rack, the USB playback uh, channels 1516, uh, go here to the outputs and then the rest of the monitor section. Again, here it tells you on the front where your uh, headphone output can source monitor or Dante 1516 and away you go. Okay, so now let's look at our first use case here. And this is what uh, the main one that the Yamaha uh, built this unit for is for you to be able to use this unit to take sources off a Dante network, push it in your machine, and then process it how you want with VST plugins. So here we are in VST rack elements. I've got eight channels of drums. So I have a console uh, playing that has some, some channels coming into it. And then there are inserts and those inserts are going out over Dante here from the desk over Dante into uh, the unit and back. So right now I'm showing you the path back from the RUIO back to the desk itself and the reverse would be true. So if I have the, the desk here, and have the RUIO, uh, that is how I'm getting it from the, the console over to the RUIO. Uh, so that's how I would patch it. And then these show up as sources here in VST rack. So I went to hardware, I'm using the audio device as the RUIO 16D. Go back here to main, and now I can see these eight channels here. So I got six mono channels, and then my last is a pair of overheads that are seven and eight. So these are some of the plugins that I like to use. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time here, but just know that 
I can run as long as it's a VST and it's stable, I've got it here. So I'm running at a buffer size of 128 samples, not super low. Uh, and the round trip latency right now that I'm getting uh, just from the device itself is about five milliseconds. So anything else is gonna be added in to the latency incurred by the plugin itself. So right here, just to show you, I did add a plugin that I like. This is the uh, Slick EQ, but you, what you need to be careful of is down here is it shows me that I do have some latency incurred. So just depending on your environment, um, do you need, need to decide if that is too much. So 183 samples is not a whole lot, uh, but it is some. But if you're using a plugin that might have look ahead, um, it might incur a whole lot more, maybe 50 milliseconds or so, uh, which is not good for in-ear monitoring or anything that has lip sync if you're syncing the video. So again, that's up to you to test out the plugins that you would like to use, throw them in here uh, and be able to see what incurs latency. So I've just got one loaded up in each channel so I could process the drums how I want. It goes right back out the USB playback um, and then onto the Dante network and then I would send it back over to the desk. So again, that, that is the first and most common use case for this unit is to give you 16 channels uh, of Dante to USB, then USB back over to Dante and you can run whatever you want. There are eight plugin slots here so I can run more if I wanted, but just wanted to give you a general overview. And don't forget, once you purchase an RUIO 16D, you can register it and get access to VST Rack Pro. And the difference what I've shown you so far is that VST Rack Pro comes with 33 plugins from Yamaha and Steinberg, and they're listed here. You've got five different reverbs, you've got three delays, three modulation effects, uh, five different EQs here. So this looks like a Poltec, a dynamic, dynamic EQ, uh, another 601, uh, and even more finer dynamic sections. So you get a maximizer. So this is your true peak limiter you can use for streaming. You've got this two compressor, the, the VCM bus comp, which I've used on a CL5 for forever. Um, you've got distortion, soft clipping. You have an amp just in case, you know, a guitar player, bass player forgets an amp can have that on there. And I'm really excited about using supervision a bit more so it can give me some loudness metering and overall analysis of the audio. So just know that Yamaha and Steinberg, very generous here uh, with giving us this many plugins included with the unit. You can put them work to you for you right in VST Rack Pro. Second, is being able to use this as a playback machine with a little bit more granularity. So working a lot on corporate gigs, oftentimes on I'm on a Yamaha desk or there's at least Dante as the main transport backbone. So I wanna use my machine to be able to host all these playback files. So this is a, a starting template that I built for corporate gigs where there might be presenter A, it goes to a voiceover of their name and it auto follows um, into a stinger, so a walk on track, and then when I hit spacebar again, it fades it, and then I'm waiting here for the next presenter. So I wanna be able to load up a voiceover, and right now, if this just was over, um, maybe just my headphone output to a pair of cables, it'd be coming down the same stereo channel. Oftentimes not a big deal, but maybe the voiceovers I got weren't that great. I need to process them uh, on my desk. I didn't have time to reprocess them and re-render, or I have the stingers I wanna be able to ride, or maybe the stinger fades in before the voiceover. I wanna set its level. I wanna be able to separate that out into a pair of channels. So I can have the voiceover. Right now I have on um, patch one, which I have going to outputs one and two, and the stinger I have on patch two, which goes to outputs three and four. And so that way I can patch two separate stereo ends on my desk and have more granular control. You might be saying, well, wait a minute, I guess I could do that on Dante Virtual Sound Card. Uh, you are correct, but with Dante Virtual Sound Card, one of the main drawbacks is that you do not have a secondary connection on your computer. So if your entire rest of your show network has a primary and secondary network and you flip over to secondary and this machine is only on the primary, uh, primary uh, then you're in trouble. So being able to have a machine that's connected that has both uh, is really key. So that's second main play, uh, use case is being able to have a separate um, device that gets me on primary and secondary and I can even do more multi-channel playback. So even if maybe I'm just using this not just for a corporate gig, but maybe uh, I'm a music director at church and I wanna be able to fan out all my tracks to maybe eight stereo stems, I can definitely do that and, and have it on the network. All right, I'm pretty excited about this last use case as a music director. I actually did this on a gig and it worked wonderfully, but I'm gonna kinda give you a generic example of, of what happened. So with the unit, 
again, we have analog ins, we have a headphone amp, we have USB to Dante. So let's combine all this into a, a really cool way can we accomplish something. So maybe you're a music director for a gig uh, or at your church. Oftentimes you're going to have a microphone that you need to be able to talk to the band with. What if you just ran that right in here to input 15 and bada boom, it's on your Dante network headed to your console. And maybe you want to run a guitar rig, uh, but it's all digital hosted in something like Gig Performer. So I got a template here pulled up. I can run that here into input 16. And if I go to my wiring here in my global rack space, uh, I can pull that into here from audio input number 16. And I got my guitar input gain and now it goes into my rig. And then what if I also want to be able to run tracks from here? Well, I've got my audio file player and it's coming into here and is now routing out of outputs one and two. So now right here from this front panel, I can play my tracks and now they are passing out of Gig Performer onto the Dante network. So again, it's USB outputs one and two, which passes the Dante outputs one and two onto my network. So I'm able to capture my guitar, capture my microphone and do tracks playback. And then also run, again, whatever software I want. Again, because VST Rack is awesome and I'm glad we have it, but it's cool to be able to use this with other software for different use cases. But here is the cherry on top. So moving here to VST Rack, remember this monitor output um, we're able to do on the headphone out. What if I got my in-ear mix back from the front of house desk, back in the RUIO, if maybe I could patch that here to IEM mix in, and come back in and let's say that was coming back on channel seven and eight over right to here. And now I have it on the desk. Very, very cool. So now I can get uh, my in-ear mix coming and use it. So again, it's capturing my guitar, sending into my digital rig. It's capturing my microphone and is able to send that to front of house. I'm able to use tracks playback from this machine to get it to front of house. I'm also able to receive my in-ear mix, come back to the unit. Uh, very, very cool. The kind of the tricky part with having to do with VST rack is that once you have an analog input, it overrides 1516, which would pass over to right here. Uh, so we need to use the monitor in, which we then select with VST rack. And so we just have to queue up a different input besides 1516 and we get it to our ears. So very, very cool. Uh, again, this worked great for me on a gig and I want to let you know that you can get a huge amount of value out of this interface. All right, that was a lot of fun to unpack for you. I hope you learned a lot about just how powerful this device is. If you have any questions or wanna pick up uh, this unit from SoundPro, make sure and reach out to your account manager. My name is Michael Curtis. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Catch you next time.